Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic. And today I'm here to talk about season two, episode 10, the season two finale of Paramount Plus's Mayor of Kingstown entitled Little Green Ant. Uh, just like with Shrinking, we're not even gonna waste our time anymore <laughs> talking about the episode titles since the show doesn't seem to particularly care about them. Like, I can't even begin to imagine what this episode title is referring to. Like, Little Green Ant, like, maybe, did you guys see anything in the episode that might tied a little green ant I don't know but it's one thing when the title is tied to something largely irrelevant like the throwaway line from Bunny in that one episode uh but I can't even make a guess on this one like I, I don't know anywho let's skip it <laughs> we're moving past the episode title let's talk about the episode I thought this was a solid episode that has some pretty high highs but um as a finale it was disappointing and I think that maybe when you combine what I feel to be an expectation of we can save that for next season along with a how do you live up to the prison riot situation uh, combined with some, I think, questionable decisions, uh, you end up with an episode that is uh, significant, significantly less than its predecessor, the season one finale, and that has a lot of issues. Um, it got off to a great start. But, uh, you know, they set the bar really high with that season one finale with the prison riot. And, and I don't know, maybe they just set it too high. Uh, the odds of matching or exceeding the season one finale in intensity were pretty low, I think. But like I said, unsurprisingly, it doesn't really work to go from a prison riot to a shootout in Miriam's house. Like, it's a huge drop off uh, in intensity. And there's also a ton of plot threads left open uh, in this episode. And like I said, it's probably because they figured they were going to get a third season. And they also probably didn't anticipate the show's star getting run over by a snowplow. But uh, nevertheless, I think the lesson here is to not assume you're going to have an abundance of extra time. Like you can, like a lot of shows do this, right? A lot of shows leave stuff for season three. It's just you can't, I don't think you can leave this much. And this is an example of why. We're probably not going to get answers to a lot of shit that this show set up and it's because they, they wanted to be like, oh, we can leave it for season three. At least I'm assuming that because the show has done a great job of answering things that I thought they weren't going to answer. So even though there's a lot of things here, I feel like they were going to answer this stuff. Just not going to get to it. <laughs> but now it kind of looks like because of that, it just looks like the show doesn't really give a fuck about some of these stories they introduced. And, and like I said, I don't believe that. Like the show uh, has closed loops consistently. You know, a lot of shows, like I said, leave plot lines open for the next season. But the trick is to provide a finale that's entertaining on its own as a standalone episode. Still answers a lot of questions if you if you have a show that set up questions and answers. But then also builds anticipation for a third season. And I think they think they did that here, but they left just too many questions. And now they're unlikely to get a third season. So it's like, I don't know, it takes away... It takes away a lot from the season two finale 
knowing that you're unlikely to get a season three and knowing that they left a lot of stuff open for season three. It's just, it, I don't know, it's just unfortunate. But uh, let's talk about the episode because it's actually more good than bad. It's just that there's this like a lot of small things and a lot of mistakes and just a lot of ways in which this could have been better and it wasn't. Um, you know, actually what, I, what I'm going to do is when I get to the end and I get to like the thought section or maybe right before the thought section, I'm going to actually go over all of the things, at least all the things that I thought of off the top of my head. There's probably more, uh, but the things I thought of off the top of my head that they didn't answer, I'm going to go over that stuff at the end. Um, let's see. So this episode opens with all the cops at the hospital in support of Robert. Nothing happens in this scene other than us learning that Robert is alive for now. But the reason I want to talk about it is because I love Kyle in this scene <laughs> and not in a good way. <laughs> uh, Kyle tells Mike that his wife left. And then he immediately, like the next sentence, he pivots back to talking about Robert. Like, ah, oh, man, but it just sucks that Robert's here. And then he goes, but I got to go be with my wife. And I, was, <laughs> and I was like, yo, you'd rather be at the bedside of your coworker than save your marriage? <laughs> like... I understand that for police officers, you're there's there's more than just they're, they're more than just coworkers to one another. But at the end of the day, like your marriage, bro, like you wanna save it or what? <laughs> um, you know, actually, rather than do this video how I intended, I'm going to actually use this moment to pivot into talking about Kyle, because uh, I just feel like Kyle Kyle's story arc in this season is simultaneously interesting and unsatisfying. <laughs> um, but first, I want to start by taking my L. I accept it. I said very early on, Kyle would die this season, and then I banged that drum all fucking season, guaranteeing it was going to happen, and God damn it, Kyle's still alive. So, <laughs> you know, I, I'd have bet money he was going to die during the fucking shootout at Miriam's house, but hey, here we are. He's, he's alive, and I'm wrong. But let's talk about the Kyle character, because I like the start of his arc. Essentially him battling depression over all the trauma he's experienced. The riot, almost killing that kid, and leaning into drugs and alcohol is an, <laughs> it's an unimaginative way of doing that, but that's what people do. It's reality, so fuck it, right? And that's what happens with Kyle. He, he, goes, in, he goes into this depression, he's doing coke, he's, like I said, he's drinking, drinking vodka out the freezer like a Russian teenager. <laughs> but what's the end game with Kyle, the character? He's not dead, which is what I expected, and rather than showing us the character arc of a man who has experienced a lot of trauma and ultimately ends at us learning how he gets past it or, or uh, he dies like I thought he would, rather than end it that way, the end of the season was adding more trauma onto the trauma pile. And I'm just like, where is this going now? Like, assuming they got another season, when did they plan on having things stop happening to Kyle and have him start to evolve based on what has already happened? Or did they plan on just increasing the trauma every like every few episodes? Like now that he shot his mother, what's left? Shooting Mike? <laughs> and speaking of Mike, the best part of this episode, uh, the best part of the opening of this episode, I haven't even got past the opening yet. The opening being everything that happens before the credits uh, is the hit attempt that happens to Mike at these train tracks. And I even had an issue with that too. So, you know, I like the action aspect of it. Watching Mike turn into an action hero and all that kind of shit, it was great. I really liked when he popped the hood on that one guy to distract him and then shot him. That was sweet. That whole scene was sick. But why is Mike's car indestructible? <laughs> like, it's a regular fucking Lincoln, man. And he just leaned down in that bitch and, and that car took like 800 bullets. <laughs> and Mike's just like, yeah, I'm cool. Like, I, does Mike have a bulletproof Lincoln and we don't know it? I don't know. And how did those AB guys even get to him in the first place? This planned attack, and it was very clearly planned, seemed to rely pretty heavily on Mike being stuck at those train tracks. And there's no way you can predict the train coming at that time or that Mike would be at that precise location at that time. Now we can make some guesses, like maybe the AB guys knew he'd be at the hospital checking on Robert, even though they're not the ones who beat him up. And maybe they followed him there, and then the train came, and they were like, oh, great opportunity here. But... Like I said, it wasn't A.B. that attacked Robert, so how would they know that he Mike would even be in the hospital, let, at the hospital, let alone for Robert? Uh, unless, like, <laughs> the, the black gang members would call A.B. Like, yo, we took out this Robert guy. Like, I don't know how they would know that so soon after the fact. But most importantly, I shouldn't have to fucking guess. Like, it should be in the show. Like, I shouldn't have to think, like, how did they pull this off? I should be able to watch it and figure it out. And we got to the end of the episode, and I don't fucking know 
how they how they ended up being able to, to move on Mike at this train train track. But while I've already beaten myself up over being wrong about Kyle, we did get confirmation that I was right about Davidson being the guy who Mike set up and killed in the episode where he went off the grid and whatnot. So this attack is likely retaliation for that one or a second try after a failed first attempt. The first attempt being Davidson. Uh, maybe now, and now maybe Gunner was like, oh, okay, Davidson didn't work, now you guys go. But this all ties together when Mike talks to Carney. Carney lets the black gang members out of their cell and into Gunner's cell. They go and kill Gunner and they say it's a message from the mayor. So ultimately, I'm in very strong support of the entire elimination of the Aryan Brotherhood in this episode. Uh, Gunner and Davidson are dead. Joining my man from season one, that, that uh, what's his name, Duke, that uh, Mike shot in the head as soon as he pulled up with Iris. He's like, yeah, that's the guy. And he just shot him. That guy, Duke. So I'm I'm fully in favor of all the all the dead Aryan Brotherhood guys. Um, mm, I'm trying to figure out if, I, if I'm done with that or if I want to come back to it. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> so Iris and Milo end up at Miriam's house, and I didn't like this. <laughs> I didn't like this either. Like Iris emerges from Miriam's shed. Like what the fuck? <laughs> that like that wasn't weird enough. And then in the next, the very next time we see them, Milo is there too, with no scene connecting how he found Iris. And again, maybe he sent her. Maybe he followed her. I don't know. But what do I always tell you guys? It need, excuse me, it needs to be on the fucking screen. And it wasn't. And the show doesn't seem to want to, the show don't seem concerned with that. I'm concerned with that. I want to know how she, I want to know how he got there. Not how he got there. I want to know how he found Iris specifically. Oh, you know what? I just remembered he put a tracker back in her. I forgot about that. Now, but wait. If Milo put a tracker back in Iris, Joseph did it earlier this season. She went to Miriam's and is like, I have no else, nowhere else to go. I have no place to go. And then Milo shows up. Is it... Like, am, is is Iris doing the long con back on the board? Like, did she go there on purpose knowing that Milo would follow her there? I don't know, man. This show is doing a lot, man. And I, it's, it's doing a lot, and it's not doing it very neatly. Um. Okay, so yeah. So I left off. I got distracted with my, my own uh, hypothesis there. But um, Mike, Kyle, and Ian then arrive at Miriam's house to trade the bonds for Iris... But the bonds are in Mike's bullet ridden Lincoln. And during the impending shootout that happens in, in the house, Miriam is shot. Uh, friendly fire from her own coked out son. <laughs> and, and like I said, can you imagine being Kyle? He almost shoots a kid and then he successfully shoots his mom. Which I was perfectly okay with this, by the way. I don't like Miriam. You guys know that. Um, but I did love the brotherly pep talk that Mike gives Kyle in the hospital while he's all broken up about it. Like that was a nice scene. It was a heartfelt scene. It was an emotional scene. They interjected a little bit of humor. Um, you know, like when Mike's like, you're going to be so grounded when she wakes up. I thought that was funny, but it was a nice scene of Mike comforting his brother. I thought that was good. Uh, before I get to the ending of the episode, I want to take a moment to talk about Bunny. Bunny's my favorite character on the show and we barely see him at all this week. But when we do, he drops a line that I love talking about how the police been on us since birth, us being black people. And I felt that, you know, Mike's warning to Bunny about a war with the police, uh, being something he don't want to, he don't want to engage in. You know, I truly believe, you know, like Mike and and white people in general might be virtually incapable of understanding black people's relationship with the police. Like you see it, you hear about it, but like I don't think they can fully understand like like just just how we look at policing in general. Not just like oh police like to kill black people, but like how police operate in general in black communities and with black people. Is going against the police ill-advised? Absolutely. But they're not the good guys who don't deserve it to us. To us, and to Bunny in particular, given everything Bunny has experienced, it's worth the risk. Because these are not people who are here to help us and then we're like, oh, we're going to attack them. These are people who have been, like, like Bunny said, they've been on us since birth. Like, this is not anything new. So, from Mike's perspective, he's probably looking at it like, oh, this is an incredibly dangerous thing. Why would you risk doing something stupid like this? 
Bunny's like, it's time to fight back. I'm sick of this shit. I feel it. Anyway, um, back to the end of the episode now. After the shootout, Mike sets up another meeting with Milo at a harbor. And this is the point at which the most important moment of the show's entire run takes place. <laughs> and I kind of love this moment because it felt to me like final, 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 final confirmation that even the show doesn't buy Iris and Mike's relationship. Every character has been like, why don't you just let Milo go? Why are you risking it off this girl? And now finally, Milo himself is like, do you know what the fuck Mike sees in you? Because <laughs> you whack as fuck. Like, you know what he sees in you? And I'm just sitting there like, yes. I, I would very much like to know the answer to this question. I've been asking it all year, maybe even all season one. Why is this a thing? And he says, I think he sees his own salvation in saving you. And I said, God damn it, another Peter Bayless gem. <laughs> like, that's actually pretty profound and a great answer. Makes a lot of sense. Shout out to motherfucking Littlefinger. I love, like, to answer, answering the question. Like, even though there's so much I didn't like about this episode, I'm so satisfied with that answer. <laughs> and, and, and the answer, not just the answer itself, but getting an answer to the question of, like, why the fuck is Iris even existing? Like, who the fuck cares about Iris? Why? I like the fact that we got an answer to that. But then the episode ends in a way that is pretty tough to explain. I don't even know if it's possible. Uh, Mike and Milo exchange the bonds for Iris. And my, Milo's like, see, was that so hard? And I, I, I kind of felt that too. Like, he's been saying the whole time he just wants the bonds you can have Iris. Like, this is very simple. But they leave the boat, they being Mike and Iris. And Milo tells his henchmen to keep their guns on Mike and Iris until he's gone. Then he gets back, he gets on the boat and he like, you see him like go down... Uh, go down the stairs into like the lower part, the same area that Mike and Mike and Iris just came out of. The boat leaves. His henchman threatens to kill them anyway, and then the boat explodes, and Mike, Iris, and Ian all take down Milo's henchman. Now, Mike spent the whole episode suggesting that killing Milo was necessary and something he needed to do. In the scene where Tatiana puts him on the phone with Milo, he even directly says like, "If I don't kill him, he's gonna come after you," which suggests that he intends on killing him, right? Right. So when the boat exploded, I was like, oh, okay, Mike must have put a bomb in the bag. Brilliant, right? Smart move. Mike don't even react to the explosion at all. Like the explosion happens, the gunfire starts, they start shooting each other. Ian shoots the one guy, Iris shoots another guy, all that. But then like they don't they don't react like uh, you know, oh shit, what just happened? Oh shit, is Milo dead? They just sit there as if like this was planned. You know, Mike's non-reaction suggests to me that he knew this was gonna happen. And still I'm like, all right, cool. But then we see Tatiana on the phone with Milo in the club. She asks if everything went well, and then he says, everything went fine, I'm on my way back. That directly contradicts everything you just showed us, suggesting Mike blew up the boat, to now suggest that Milo faked his own death. And then here's another thing. I'm fine with that too. I'm fine with him faking his death. It's a logical move for the character. Feels like something Milo would do. My problem is the fact there's a lot of evidence on the screen throughout the course of this episode and this season that Mike had every intention of killing Milo, that he successfully did it, but no evidence that Milo would fake his own death, but that seems to be the direction they're going, and that's what I don't like. All the evidence to suggest that Mike, Mike put a bomb in the bag and blew up the boat to kill Milo, nothing to suggest that Milo faked his own death, other than, like again, well, obviously him being on the phone suggests he faked his own death, but you know what I'm saying, like a... a, a any kind of setup for that. So there's no reason for me to believe that that's what happened other than hearing Milo's voice, but there's a ton of reasons to believe that Mike would have done it. So like, while I like Milo faking his own death, I don't like them essentially telling me one thing and doing something different. Especially since I said there's a ton of evidence on the screen about for Mike to do it and none for Milo. Um, and then, you know, they show me on screen Milo descending into the bowels of this boat the boat blowing up in the middle of the water, and then they expect me to believe Milo faked his own death, but like, how could, could he, how could he possibly survive that? Like, how could he possibly not been on the boat at all? There's no, like, if the, if the boat was still at the dock when it exploded, I would, I could probably come up with an idea of like, maybe he went down on the boat. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even, there couldn't even be a trap door in the bottom of the boat, because of course water would rush in. But I could, I don't know, maybe I could try to figure out a way where he had something set up maybe in the water already underneath the boat. So then when he went down, went down back into the boat, maybe he went into a connecting, 
I don't know, shelter or something, whatever. But the boat was moving in the middle of the water. So I'm just like, I don't, I don't know how he could have gotten off the boat. And, and now I'm, I'm willing to accept that the show probably has an explanation for this. You know, there have been several moments where the show has done something that I thought didn't make sense. I came on here and I'm like, yo, that didn't make sense. And they explained it in the very next episode to the point where I stopped doing it. And I'm like, eh, this didn't make sense, but they're probably going to explain it. And then they did. But now we're unlikely to get a season three. So now this incredibly confusing season two finale is likely going to be the last of this show. And that sucks. Uh, but this does, however, give me another segue into my final topic, which I alluded to at the beginning, the plot, plot threads that this season left dangling, either inadvertently or to save them for next season. So one, Miriam, dead or alive? Don't know. Robert, dead or alive? Don't know. Uh, the war between the gangs and the cops that the show spent a large part of this season building up toward never even fucking happened. Kind of thought that was going to be their prison riot for season two's finale. Didn't do it. So they set up this war between the gangs and the cops. Didn't even have... Har Bunny has like one scene in the finale. And, that, and that's it. So they set it up to have absolutely nothing happen and to have Bunny only in one scene. Don't like that. Uh, Charlie killing the guy who was going to testify against Robert. I really wanted to see how that was going to play out. And they have not even talked about it let alone going back to it and again they're probably saving it for season three it's probably a season three arc just like the war between the gangs and the cops is probably a season three arc too bad we're not getting season three uh, and then the old man with the pigeon from episode one in, in my video for that i'm like what is that about what was that scene with the pigeon what was the point of that and then now throughout the course of the season you know we've seen uh well this is season one but like you know using tennis balls to get stuff into the prison this season, we see drones being used to get stuff in the prison. Was it not set up to maybe that they were going to use pigeons to get drugs into the prison? Like, was that not why they were, why that scene was there to set up the possibility of like, maybe that old man who was at that dock who uses pigeons to get stuff in the prison, maybe that's Raph's father, right? Raphael, who's now in charge and just, <laughs> just killed Gunner. So really, really in charge. Maybe that's his son or grandson or whatever. And Raph is going to be like, you know, uh, the drones, are, we don't have the drones. We don't have the tennis balls. You know what? My, my, my granddad been sending me messages via carrier pigeon. <laughs> Maybe I could get him to stuff some drugs in there too. Makes perfect sense, but we never get it. And they set that up in the first episode with no intention of paying it off in the whole, and throughout the whole season. Because we knew, I mean, we see the season's over. That never played out. It'd be really weird. Like, they set stuff up and then explain it in the next episode or something like that. But it'd be really weird to set something up in episode one of season two that doesn't pay off until season three. That'd be weird. But we're not getting season three. So it's another plot hole. Uh, and then uh, I want to close with a couple of quick thoughts. Uh, I laughed when Ian said they shot up. He's like, they shot up the Lincoln. And Mike's like, no, they shot up the Bentley. Yes, they shot up the fucking Lincoln. <laughs> and then... How come the woman who plays Kyle's wife looks soulless every time we see her? And when I say soulless, I don't mean like she's playing a woman who's dejected about her merits. The actress herself looks checked out of the scenes. Like, she looks like she don't care about shit. This episode was the last episode of her acting career, so she totally fucking mailed it in. Like, this is a woman who, she didn't look sad. Like, she didn't look so, like, so, no, soulless is how she looked. She didn't look sad. She didn't look depressed. She didn't look, like... This whole uh, situation with my husband is wearing me down. She looked like somebody who didn't want to be in that scene. Like, that looked like an actress who was just like, I'm going to give you the bare fucking minimum and you're going to use it and then I'm out. I don't, I don't know. I didn't like that scene. I felt like the wife's been like that for a lot of the season. I don't know. I'm not a fan of this actress. But uh, that's all I got for this episode. Let me know what you thought about season two in the comments. You'll be able to find me on, again on the Daily DVR podcast. Uh, whenever the episode for the finale is released, we're going to be recording that probably uh, tomorrow, which is Tuesday the 21st. I will be recording that so you'll be able to find me again talking about the finale. I'll be able to talk about it more in depth since I do about 20, 25 minutes on here. You're probably going to get a good hour conversation on that podcast, so you might want to check that out. Um, and I will see you guys. I don't know. There's probably not going to be a season three, but I am curious what you guys thought. You think I'm too hard on the show? You, did you Do you have an explanation for the multitude of things that I feel like they didn't explain well? Let me know and I will see you guys next time. Peace.